Now that we've talked about Lambda expressions, we're going to talk about another foundational Java 8 feature called method reference or method references. And I'll show you a bunch of examples again. The examples in some ways will extend what we just talked about before. And we'll talk about method references and also uh, just a little bit about constructor references. We will go into constructor references in a lot more detail later in the course. So what is a method reference? A method reference is a very compact, easy to read handle for a method that already has a name. So keep in mind, remember, a lambda expression didn't have a name, whereas a method reference has a name. And as you can see, there's a, a whole bunch of them. Um, so it's basically shorthand syntax for a lambda expression that executes a single method. And here are some examples. There's one kind of method reference is a reference to a static method. So you would have the name of the class, colon, colon, static method name. So here's an example. String, colon, colon, value of. So value of is a static method that's part of the string class that will take um, something and, and basically make the value of it. And then here's sort of the corresponding lambda expression. Another type of method reference is a reference to an instance method of a particular object. So this is no longer a static method. This is an instance method. In other words, something where you need an object in order to call it. So in that case, you have the containing object, colon, colon, instance method name. So if you had a string s, then you could use a method reference to be s colon colon to string. That would be a method reference for that particular string instance s, or that object s. And here's kind of the corresponding lambda expression, s arrow s dot to string. You can also have a reference to an instance method of an arbitrary object of a given type, as opposed to a specific object of a particular type. So in that case, kind of like what we see up here, it's the name, colon, colon, name of the type, name of the class, colon, colon, method name. So we could have string, colon, colon, to string. Note that's not a static method. To string is not a static method. But there would be some arbitrary object that could be, using, be used for that. And then the final type of method reference, which is actually given the name constructor reference, is a reference to a constructor. So if you have a class, like string, you can say, the class name colon colon new, for example, string colon colon new. And that corresponds to a constructor that will make an instance of that particular object or particular class. So that would be like new string. That's the lambda expression. If anybody here has ever programmed with C and used C pointers to member functions or pointers to static member functions, then method references are much the same kind of thing. It's a name for something with this colon colon syntax to indicate what what it's associated with. Yes? Uh, basically, it will go ahead and call the method name on the actual object, which could be any object that happens to be appropriate in that context. So it's, they would usually be used in situations where there was an object that you were doing through some other means, and it knows to call that method on that object. We'll, we'll see some examples of it in a, in a second. Method references are really good because they're even more compact than lambda expressions. But they're not quite as flexible. So you can see that in the, in the taxonomy of behavioral parameterization, the lambdas are very concise but flexible. The uh, method references are very concise but a little bit more rigid because you just name them. And we'll see an example here in a second. So if you recall before we had our um, example where we had the array of string names. And I'd shown you a couple different ways to sort it. So we first looked at this horrible, gas-guzzling, verbose monstrosity involving anonymous inner classes. We then looked at this much more compact, like smart car kind of approach using lambda expressions. And then we look at this car, which is sort of like a clown car, right? It's a very tiny car, um, probably like you probably have to pedal it or something like that. Um, this is the most compact and, and, for my money, the most readable version. So we say name or arrays.sort, name array, comma, and then to your question, string, colon, colon, compare to ignore case. So in this case, this thing is saying, we will, I will give you objects. <laughs> I will give you pairs of objects that have to know how to be compared using the string class, using the string compared to ignore case method. So I think you'll agree with me that that is um, 
very concise, arguably more readable than this. And in fact, modern compilers will actually automatically switch from this to that. They'll prompt you for, for ways to refactor your code to, to make it even more concise. The other nice thing here is that method references promote code reuse. And uh, that's because the, the arrays.sort implementation never changes, but the parameter changes. The way we do the comparison changes. And we can reuse compared to ignore case, which is obviously developed for the string class for totally other purposes. Uh, and we can trivially pass it in to parameterize the behavior of the sort algorithm. So um, here's another example. I mean, this is an example of that. So we can replace compare to ignore case, which ignores case, with compare to, which does not ignore case. And you can see that all you have to do is just change the name of the parameter you pass as the second parameter to sort. This is an example of another pattern that you undoubtedly have seen if you've taken CS251 here, which is called the strategy pattern. And the strategy pattern basically defines an interface for an algorithm and then makes it possible to kind of plug and play implementations in a very clean way. So that's clearly the strategy pattern. And so it's very nice, very simple. Therefore, and I obviously cut and pasted this to the Lambda exp expression slides incorrectly, it's best practice to use method references wherever you can. So even better than using Lambda expressions is to use method references. In terms of runtime performance, they're identical. But in terms of how much time is required to take a look at that code and trivially know what it does once you know how to read the syntax, method references are preferred. Let's take a look at applying some method references in practice. So this will be a fun little example. Once again, we have our array of strings. Here we can use println to print out the array of strings as a list. So you can use the as list factory method on the arrays utility class, which will take an array of something and turn it into a list of something. And that'll print this. We can also use variants of the for each method. And you'll, you'll get a chance to play around with this and implement this in assignment 1b. So the for each method can be used to print out the values of an array. Uh, here's one way to do it. You can say stream.of name array. So you can take the name array, convert it into a stream. And then for each element in the stream, we're going to go ahead and print that element. And so system.out colon colon print is a method reference that will be performed on each element in the stream, which is all the names as strings in the original array. That's one way to do it. Here's another way to do it, using a collection. We can say arrays.asList, which converts the name array into a list. And then for each element in the list, we go ahead and print out the element using system.out colon colon print, which is a method reference associated with that. Yes? Is there a preferred way to do this between collections? Yeah, I would typically go with whatever is the simplest way to do it. So in this case, probably just doing the list version is simpler than using the stream. Having said that, there are times when streams are the right way to go because you want to be able to compose a bunch of things together. So if you're composing things together in a pipeline, go with a stream. Uh, the example here didn't do that. The example here, as you can see, just turned a, an array into a stream and then printed it out. That's probably overkill. So I, I would say go with the list version because it's going to be probably more efficient and probably straight, more straightforward. Uh, another reason is because the semantics of for each on a stream differ a bit from for each on a collection. And this is a little bit of an esoteric forward reference to something we'll talk about much later. But it turns out that on a stream, the ordering of for each is undefined, whereas for a collection, it's defined. And it's always you know, left to right. You could think about like a list. It'd be the first element, second element, up to the nth element. Whatever the iterator returns is the ordering for a, a collection. Whereas on a stream, for reasons we'll see when we talk about parallel streams, they leave it intentionally undefined. That doesn't mean it's incorrect. It just means that it could appear in a different order than sort of left to right. OK, so that is the end of the method references discussion. Um, you will find in your solutions that you're going to be doing that uh, a lot of the stuff you'll be doing will involve method references. That's good. Whenever you can find a way to use the method reference, it's almost always a win. 
When you have to use Lambda expressions, those are fine too. You very rarely, if ever, have to use anonymous inner classes anymore. About the only time you have to use anonymous inner classes is if there's some reason why the method you're defining needs to access this. Because for various somewhat esoteric reasons, there's no this in a lambda expression. Lambda expressions aren't really objects, whereas anonymous inner classes, instances of anonymous inner classes, are in fact objects. So they can reference this. Um, for most of what we're going to do in this class, that distinction is not relevant, but it's just something to be aware of in the back of your mind. OK, so that's the end of the method references.